Ole Miss should devastate Oklahoma on matchups alone. You are locked on Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports and a former Ole Miss staff member. On today's show, we break down the Ole Miss Rebels matchup against the Oklahoma Sooners this Saturday, a game that might just be the best matchup for Ole Miss remaining on the schedule. The Rebels' defensive line, led by Walter Nolan, looks to dominate, especially with the likely return of Prince Lee and Mommy Ellen to a full-strength defensive line. This gives Ole Miss a major advantage, allowing them to scheme up against Oklahoma's offensive line that has been struggling. If this defensive line shows up, it's a matchup that Ole Miss wins every single time. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available in all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first and listen every day and a special hello to the insiders and everydayers who make this show what it is. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, the Oklahoma Sooners game, and this is probably the most favorable matchup that Ole Miss has on its schedule for the remainder of the year, and that is because of the struggles that Oklahoma is currently having on the offensive line. The keys to this game, they're simple. Like I said, this is the best matchup for Ole Miss in the last five games, but Oklahoma's talented. So you have to be careful about the talent of Oklahoma if you want to look at the blue chip ratio or something like that. Oklahoma's like at 70 70% or something like that um, of those type players on their roster. So they're talented. Schematically, they're not quite there yet, and they need to kind of put it all together. Second of all, Jackson Dart needs to be the quarterback that Ole Miss fans are expecting him to be this year. And third of all, what role would Joe John Finley calling plays for Oklahoma have on Saturday? We'll talk about that as well. Also, before we get started, I do want to let you know that the Ole Miss Rebels on SI story of the day, there's an article by Jackson Harris on the site. It's Ole Miss football versus Oklahoma series history, the 1999 Independence Bowl, because that is the history. Ole Miss winning that game over Oklahoma on the last second, Les Binkley kick is worth mentioning. Hey, good for them as well. That night, I watched that kick, went to sleep after the game. We watched it in a hotel in Bristol, Tennessee. Me and my, I I think that was still future wife at that point, watched that game, and we were heading back to D.C., back for our military service and all of that after Christmas leave. And the hotel caught on fire like an hour after the game ended. So after I watched Les Binkley kick that field goal in the last game of the 1900s, the hotel caught on fire, and we had to leave at like 1.30 in the morning because the hotel caught on fire. And that is my memory of the Ole Miss-Oklahoma game from 25 years ago. So that is interesting. That's crazy to think of, 25 years. Anyway, this Ole Miss defense has a massive advantage over the Oklahoma offense. Now, Jackson Arnold's a really good player. Michael Hawkins is a good player. Oklahoma has some talented players on offense. At wide receiver, we have to wait and see if some of the, those players show back up. Now, they had a receiver named Jacob Jordan. He's a true freshman, I think, out of South Lake, Texas, like 5'9", a slot receiver. He was like 6 for 86 against South Carolina. So he actually made a little bit of noise. But offensively, this season's been a problem for the Oklahoma Sooners. When you look at Ole Miss right now, nationally, and this is basically with Ole Miss's defensive front, not making any registrable numbers at sacks and TFLs in two weeks because they were off last week and the week before against LSU, they didn't do much. But Ole Miss is still seventh in the country in sacks at 24. They are second in the country in tackles for loss at 66, and they are second in the country behind the Texas Longhorns in scoring defense at 10.57 per game. Now, if you contrast that with what's going on with Oklahoma, Oklahoma has given up 29 sacks this year. That's good enough for number 132 nationally. Their run offense is 112 yards a game. That's 114th nationally, and they are scoring 22.1 points per game. That's good for 
number 107 nationally. This is not the Oklahoma offense you're used to. This is not the Oklahoma offense you've grown up on. They are not the explosive units that have basically dominated the better part of the 21st century offensively. I go, Listen, I like Oklahoma. I genuinely like Oklahoma. Back in the day, my uncle, who was a big Nebraska fan, and, you know, you always root against somebody that, you know, your family with and all of that. So I naturally gravitated towards the Oklahoma Sooners back in the Barry Switzer and the Jamel Holloway and the Keith Jackson time frames. I genuinely like Oklahoma. So this is a game that while I'm going to just tell it like it is with the expectation that Ole Miss is going to win it, it's also coming with the knowledge that Oklahoma is really good at turning things around. And when Ole Miss goes out to the Palace on the Plains next year, it could look completely different. I understand that. This isn't a program statement. This isn't anything like that. This is just a problematic unit on the offensive line and an offense that is struggling, as evidenced by Seth Luttrell being relieved of his jobs. We're going to talk about Joe John Finley taking over that play calling role at the end of the show. But no, that I have no ill will towards Oklahoma. I I genuinely enjoy watching them play, and them running over the Big 12 made me snicker for the better part of the last 20 years in the Big 12. They should have beat Oklahoma State to get win the last Bedlam game, but I digress. So let's talk some more about this offense, because it is disappointing, because this offense from Oklahoma has been the calling card for the Sooners in the better part of the last 15 to 20 years. Ever since, honestly, the year after David Cutcliffe beat um, Bob Stoops, that the Oklahoma Sooners won their last national championship, they've been on this run ever since. And it's very weird that now it just doesn't seem right. Now, if you look at third downs, Ole Miss on defensively, they're giving up 25% third down conversions. That's 29 of 113 third down conversions. When you look at that on the flip side, what going to, what is going on with Oklahoma, they're converting at 27%. That's 28 of 101. Ole Miss is in the top five nationally. Oklahoma's below 100, which they are quite a bit. Everybody should see the mismatch that Ole Miss has on the defensive side of the ball this game. Now, I am thinking this the offense is going to look a bit different this week. I think Joe John Finley are, is going to do some things that will help this offense, and this is based off of his Jeff Levy, Baylor, Art Browles era roots of how to run an offense. It's not going to be so air raidy. It's going to be more like vis- very physical. So you might see the Oklahoma Sooners come out and genuinely try to run the football against Ole Miss, but That's been problematic for teams all year. It's hard to run the ball against this Ole Miss unit when you look at Walter Nolan, and you're going to have Princely and Mommy Ellen back. And this is an Oklahoma offense that gave up nine sacks against the South Carolina Gamecocks just a week ago. It's going to be problematic, and it's going to be a fight. If this defensive line shows up and does what we all expect them to do, Ole Miss is going to win this game, and they might be close to covering if we're going to be real about it. If Ole Miss scores 24 points in this game, they win, period. Oklahoma is a really good defensive team against an Ole Miss offense that has struggled. This is actually a nice get-right type situation that Ole Miss's offense has in front of them because Oklahoma's defense is good, legitimately good. But I think you could see Oklahoma trying to do something similar to what Kentucky did. Um, But here's the problem. Last week against South Carolina, they tried to run tempo a couple of times. I think Joe John Finley and that Jeff Lebby style is going to try and run tempo in the game. And that is going to not make the game shorter. That is going to keep their own offense off the field. It's going to allow Ole Miss to establish control of the ball game if that happens. If these matchups in this game happen exactly how we expect them to, Ole Miss is going to win this game fairly easy. It's one of the reasons that right now Ole Miss is a 20.5-point favorite on FanDuel. And the over-under is not moving. It's because Seth Luttrell got um, relieved of duty 
uh, and Joe John Finley is taking over. And like I said, we're going to talk about that in just a second. But we'll see exactly how that goes and what Ole Miss is going to do. Okay, Jackson Dart, it's time to become the player that every Ole Miss fan knows you can be. So can Dart rise to the moment and lead the Rebels to victory? Stay tuned to see what's at stake. Hey, Locked On Ole Miss fans, it's time to recognize the Roy Player of the Week. And yes, I realize that Ole Miss had a bye week this week. So far this season, we've pooled over $10,000 to support players on Roy. Micro deposits lead to massive change. With the Roy app, you can direct your support to the athletes you love, ensuring that all funds go to a specific player that you choose. Unlike collectives, you know exactly where your support is going and even receive exclusive content like personal videos and updates after the season. The best part is risk-free. If an athlete transfers or doesn't deliver the content, you get your money back. This week, I'm supporting Vandy's Diego Pavia because in a bye week, I wanted to reward Diego Pavia for what he's done. I just pitched in 100 bucks, and I would love for you to join me. Even $10 makes a difference. Let's show Diego Pavia the love even though he isn't Ole Miss just because he's awesome. Remember, pay today, celebrate tomorrow. Your support sets your team up for success. Plus, don't miss out on Roy's exciting giveaways. Win two tickets to a game in November. Just download Roy, create an account, and enter, enter referral code locked on. That's two words, and you are entered. Already on Roy, any contribution to an athlete's campaign also gets you ent- entered automatically. No purchase is necessary, void where prohibited. Download Roy now and join the NIL game with no subscriptions and no fees. And be sure to check out check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and X at Roy underscore return on you for more information. Roy, support the players, change the game. So this is really interesting. Jackson Dart, over the course of his first two seasons at Ole Miss, He's pretty much answered every bell that he's had to deal with at Ole Miss. And it's weird to see him struggle. I'm doing air quotes right now. Struggle over the last few games. Against Kentucky was not his best game. I mean, I think he would tell you that. I think LSU, he would say it was not his best game. I think he would say South Carolina was not his best game. And what is going on is teams are just taking away the explosive play from Ole Miss and saying, hey, drive the field. If you drive the field down the field without self-destructing, you can score. You can do whatever you need to do. But we are not going to give you 65-yard touchdown passes. There were times at that LSU game where Ole Miss were forcing the ball deep downfield. Like Juice Wells, the benefit of Juice Wells is his run after catch. Everybody knows that. I've talked about that for probably eight months at this point. But Ole Miss is using him like DK Metcalf at the moment to where you're throwing 50-50 balls up to somebody that can make contested catches downfield, but these are very low probability catches that Ole Miss are going after right now. I think moving Juice Wells into the slot, using those inside receivers underneath would do a ton to help this offense. That's just my opinion. When you look at Jackson Dart so far this season, He's 151 for 215, 2,384 yards. That's good enough for third in the entire NCAA. 14 touchdowns, three interceptions. So whenever we critique Jackson Dart, realize that we're critiquing a very high-level Jackson Dart at the moment as well. He does need to break out in one of these SEC games. He is a senior, as a matter of fact. Now, Trey Harris, we do not know the situation with Trey Harris. We are waiting on the injury report tomorrow. Right now, he has 59 catches, 987 yards, six touchdowns. Heck, you probably can't believe the injury report anyway as it sits. But he is the main focal point of this offense right now, and I think this offense needs to get a little bit more varied, and I think it will. I think that during the bye week, they self-scout it like all teams do, and they just looked at these easy analytical points that they can hit on that's going to make Trey better, it's going to make the other players better, make the offense a little bit harder to, to defend. You know, you look at Daquan Wright. He's got five catches over the course of the year. Five catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown. That isn't a situation to where, you know, he's just not performing. It's just he's not being used at the moment. You look at Caden Prescorn. Caden Prescorn's only got 12 catches, 203 yards, and a touchdown. 
He's another situation of it's just not him being used at the moment. 40 yards of these receiving was on one catch. So that is what we're talking about. And for Ole Miss, and my take is, Ole Miss is going to look like Ole Miss offensively Saturday after the bye week. This is going to be the week that Ole Miss kind of puts it all together. And we'll see exactly how that goes. Listen, Lane Kiffin has heard all the noise. Heck, we've been insanely loud over the last eight or nine days, probably longer than that. Jackson Dart has heard all the noise. He honestly has probably needed a day to blow off steam. And it looked like, thanks to social media, he got that. So we will see what this football can do, team can do offensively because they're going against a pretty good defensive unit in the Oklahoma Sooners. Brent Venables is known for being a good defensive coordinator. He is really good at sending blitzes at different angles that you're not um, expecting. And he is going into this game expecting to have four seconds to get to the quarterback. And he is going to design his blitzes against the film that is already out there to where you will have time to get to the quarterback. I expect a little bit of delayed blitzes from time to time. They're going to do things to take advantage of Ole Miss's offensive line a little bit. That is the plan based off the film, in my opinion. Ole Miss can counteract that by going to much more of a quick game. Everybody that follows me on Twitter, watches the show, has heard the podcast probably more than twice, knows how much I love quick game and how important it is especially with the weapons that Ole Miss has. Listen, I make no bones about it. This is my opinion of what happened in that Kentucky game and that LSU game. Ole Miss was too reliant on Trey Harris. They voluntarily took that the weapons that they have all over the field, and they made them less by always going to the same person. So the defense knew exactly what to happen. You didn't even have to worry about Juice Wells. You didn't have to worry about Caden Prescorn, Daquan Wright any of those guys because they were going to force it to Trey Harris. And Trey Harris made an unbelievable touchdown catch in that LSU game. But I do digress on that one. This is a situation of Jackson Dart. If he has more variability in the offense, if they use the quick game, if the game plan that was the Texas A&M Aggies, the LSU Tigers, the um, Penn State Nittany Lions from a year ago, if that surfaces, because that hasn't surfaced so far this season, if that surfaces as Ole Miss's offense, Ole Miss is going to win this game going away. Oklahoma cannot score enough to match the Ole Miss offense at that point. And then you match how good this Ole Miss defense is, you see how it could be problematic for the Oklahoma Sooners. But it will be on Ole Miss. It will be on Jackson Dart to use these weapons. Remember, the late, great Mike Leach, God rest his soul, described balance as this. It's not 50-50 pass run balance. No, he described balance on the number of touches of each of the offensive weapons. And the more you could even that out, the more effective your offense was going to be. I think that Ole Miss as an offensive unit needs three catches from Juice Wells, Caden Lee, Caden Prescorn, Daquan Wright, and Trey Harris at a minimum. Now, you can go above that in certain areas, but if you have that kind of a distribution to where there are six multiple catch options in your receiving unit, that's going to make the defense really struggle. We always talk about this. When Lane Kiffin's offense is working at its highest level, they torture linebackers. They just do. Ole Miss is throwing most of their passes 30 yards downfield outside the numbers at the moment. At the moment, they are not torturing linebackers they've gotten pretty easy to defend the linebackers can just turn around and run 20 yards backwards and you might be in a place for a zone as you're just trying to keep everything in front of you Ole Miss needs to essentially drive the ball down the field I honestly run the ball a little bit more throw the ball underneath to their tight ends and their slot receivers Find different ways to get the football. It can't just be the shotgun toss sweep out wide and the inside zone play. Ole Miss probably needs to run a little bit of gap scheme. Ole Miss needs to run some counter. Ole Miss needs to make those linebackers legitimately start to worry. Danny Stutzman's a really good football player, a really good football player. 
You need to make his life as tough as possible. And how you do that is through the quick game, real quick. I think the jet sweep needs to come back into focus. I don't know where it's went. That was a major component of this offense over the previous three seasons, three or four seasons. Was it the snapping, anything like that, that has done that? We will see. I want to see a little bit of 12 personnel, too. Everybody knows I want to see 12 personnel. But Ole Miss running 12 personnel is another way to unlock this offense. Daquan Wright is more of a big jumbo-type receiver, a little bit bigger than Evan Ingram, but the same type of player. And then Caden Prescorn is that true hand-in-the-ground tight end. I think formationally, Ole Miss needs to get into 12 personnel and just make other teams hurt a little bit, too. Because Ole Miss has the ability to play joy of the smurder ball. They do. To just run the ball downfield, take off seven minutes off, off the clock, and after you score twice, there's no way of the other team catching up with you because of the way you're playing. You're not beating yourself. So we'll see exactly how that goes and what's going to go on. You know, Oklahoma's Joe John Finley is taking the reins as the play caller when the Sooners roll into Oxford. How will this shakeup impact the matchup against Ole Miss? Stay tuned for a full preview. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season off with a big return on FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Ole Miss is favored by 20 and a half points against the Oklahoma Sooners. That's absolutely nuts. Despite an over and under being at just 47 and a half right now, that's like a 34 to 13 type victory um, for Ole Miss. And honestly, that might make a little bit of sense. But if you're watching this game and you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. So Oklahoma made a change at offensive coordinator earlier this week to where they removed Seth Luttrell, who had been running more air raid type stuff, hearkening back to the early Bob Stoops era of Oklahoma football, those teams that faced the 99 Ole Miss team and won the 2000 National Championship. Those teams, Seth Luttrell has been more like them than like the Jeff Levy stuff that they were doing a year ago. And Joe John Finley is from that Jeff Levy school. He came from Baylor with Jeff Levy, bounced around with him, got the job. He spent time at Ole Miss, like a year at Ole Miss. I think he coached Kenny Yaboa at tight end. But he saw the offense and exactly how that looked. So I think this Oklahoma offense, it's not going to change much, okay? Because you can't drill for nine months and change everything on a dime. You might add a play or two, something like that, but you can't change everything. So there's different things in this changeover that will be at least interesting. Ole Miss has a very physical run defense. I expect quick passes. The hitches that Jeff Levy used to do, you're going to see those happen quite a bit. You're going to see a physical type running game quite a bit. It's going to be up to Ole Miss to get off the field. And we showed you earlier in the show that Ole Miss has a propensity for doing that. This Joe John Finley change, he is more Jeff Levy than Seth Luttrell. Ole Miss would have preferred Seth Luttrell to come into Oxford because that system just wasn't working for whatever reason. But Joe John Finley, he is going to do some of the Baylor stuff that Ole Miss has done, Mississippi State's currently doing, and Oklahoma did a year ago. I think some of the creativeness is going to pop in there, and of course the tight ends are going to be a weapon because Joe John Finley is a tight end coordinator First and foremost, that's what he does. That's what he knows. And Oklahoma, I think they brought in an analyst that's going to coach the actual quarterbacks, which is what Seth Luttrell was coaching. Listen, Jackson Arnold, him being in a quarterback, that's less than optimal for Ole Miss fans because Ole Miss would have preferred Michael Hawkins nine times out of ten if they could get him. But we'll see. Like I said, Jacob Jordan, the wide receiver, the walk-on out of Southwest Tech, South Lake, Texas, 
had six catches for nearly 100 yards a week ago against South Carolina. There was a rapport being developed between him and Jackson Arnold, which is kind of what happens in the middle of the season. He's a freshman. He is a slot type guy. You know, the Mark Stoops or the Bob, whatever, the Stoops kid that played for Oklahoma, really similar to that. And Oklahoma is pretty famous for using those inside type wide receivers going back all the way to Mike Leach. So we'll see what this offense looks like. I do not think it's going to look very air raidy. I think Ole Miss is going to be able to tee off a little bit. I think um, Joe John Finley is going to run this a little bit more like Jeff Levy runs his offenses. You're going to see tempo. You're going to see physicalness running the football, and you're going to see really quick passes. Oklahoma is very afraid to throw the ball downfield because we showed their stats earlier where they've given up 29 sacks over the course of the season. They're going to get the ball out of Jackson Arnold's hand as quickly as possible. So when you look at all of this, I do think that they're going to do some mesh type stuff and they're going to get creative at times. But this feels like Ole Miss needs to put seven in the box, really focus on that run game and shutting it down and trying to affect the passer in the best way they can. If they do that, Jackson Arnold is going to throw the ball to the other team. It just happens whenever you have to deal with that much pressure. But I do think this Oklahoma offense is going to be better with Joe John Finley than without it. Honestly, I'll put this up here because I made the graphic. Finley is the OC. Joe John Finley will be the OC on Saturday, which means more Jeff Lebby looking offense than air raid. And again, he is somebody that spent some time in Oxford, Mississippi. He has some familiarity with the Manning Center. And Lane Kiffin, importantly, is going to know how he thinks because we've seen that. So this is an advantage that Ole Miss could possibly have. But the best unit on the field is going to be the Ole Miss defensive line, period. Not even close. Um, the Ole Miss linebackers is probably you know second on that list. It's going to be very difficult for the Oklahoma Sooners to run the football, but they're going to try. This game for Oklahoma, and they know this, they're four and two, four and three right now. They're trying to salvage this season for a bowl game. They know that this game is about establishing a mindset. It isn't necessarily about winning the game. Now, everybody wouldn't like to win the game, but it isn't necessarily about that. It's about establishing that mindset. So you can see this offense look completely different over the course. All right. Check us out on the 24 Plus app and ABC 24. They do a lot of great stuff as well. And thank you very much for making Locked On Ole Miss your go to source for Ole Miss sports. We pride ourselves in offering the most comprehensive perspectives, which is why we're the number one Ole Miss podcast out there. Your support means the world to us. You know, thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On SEC podcast. Host Chris Gordy holds no punches covering the best conference in college football. Find Locked On SEC on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Also, exciting news. You can now become a Locked On Ole Miss insider. It's the best and easiest way to stay updated on all things Ole Miss sports. It's our texting program that sends you notifications on anything relevant without all the hassle of message boards filled with trolls. Enjoy a 14-day free trial and experience the future of college sports coverage. We're constantly adding new perks as we grow, so do not miss out. The link is down in the description. And for those of you watching on YouTube, we're going to send you to Locked On College Sports right now. Howdy toddy, everyone.